Okay, here's something I just got today. Little product that I ordered. And the box is not in good shape. Um, it doesn't feel packaged very well. Kind of worried about that. We'll see how good a job this guy did. I'm already getting concerned. Um, I'll be amazed if anything's not broken. It's kind of stained up. There is a scan of this out there already. I think archive.org has it. Um, well, he actually separated the item, so there's something. The wire paper tray rack, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this thing was in great shape according to the pictures. But uh, starting to wonder anymore. The grand unveiling is the plastic. All right. Surprisingly not cracked. Ooh. Oh, that's chipped in front. Yeah, that's upsetting. This is cracked off. That really pisses me off. Oh, nice. The ribbon's just laying in here. Maybe this door was already cracked. I don't know. But yeah, it doesn't. Well, it's good enough, I guess. At least it's not cracked here or anything. The old ink ribbon. Not sure of the maker on this. Cables in here. Looks all right. Not sure where that goes. Oh, that's probably from the power cable. Looks like he actually tested it. This is a test. Is lightly printed on there. Um, probably shouldn't do this quite yet, since this was out in um, zero degree weather. I let it warm up for a while, but I'm too curious. Plug it in. Nothing instantly blew up. The case seems in good shape. Here's the back, Centronics port, non-removable power switch. Oh, the switch is on the side here. All right. Paper jam. There we go. Straight from Epson. These were out of stock. Um, when I went to look, I was surprised they actually listed them on their website. Um, and then I put a reminder to notify me when they're back in stock. And a couple days later, I did get a reminder. Um, so they were back in stock, and right from Epson, $6 each free shipping. You can't beat that. Official ribbons for $6 with free shipping right from Epson. Not bad. I ordered two of them right away. Um, genuine Epson. 
Got that from Epson.com. So it says the FX80 um, MX80. So this should work. Open. Kind of weird. Brand new ink ribbon still. Epson right on there. Let's look at the other one. Slightly different. Yeah, this one's obviously an aftermarket. Is it? Maybe. I don't know. Hard to tell. Yeah, there's no model number. Maybe It's probably aftermarket. Yeah, right from Epson. Brand new. We recommend you use genuine Epson ribs, ribbon cartridges. The use of other products may affect your print quality and will result in printer damage. Valid for two years. Production date of 2-11-17. So these are almost a year old. Almost. Yeah, nice. Brand new. Okay. Installing the ribbon. Position the printer right side up with the Epson label front facing you. Yep, it is. Okay. Locate the paper bale, the movable metal bar with numbers 1 through 80 or 1 through 36, and push it toward the back away from you. Oh, here. Okay. All right, so it is in the back away from me. Holding the cartridge by its handles, steer the four tabs on its side into the four slots in the printer's metal frame. Press the cartridge firmly into place. This must be the handle. Um, is that a slot? I think we got her in. Using a pencil, lift the ribbon into the slot in front of the print head. With a little practice, we can do it one quick operation. Uh, so, yeah, we are. In Wind the ribbon tight again with a little plastic knob, and it's all set to go. MX80 owners may notice a sticker with the words exchange times on the ribbon carpet cartridge. This is a remnant of an early plan to refill the cartridges when the ribbon was worn out. Epson does offer refills for the MX100. Well, I guess we don't have that here. Yeah. This thing's going junk. Here we go. Here, shows the print characters. Turn the printer off, load the printer with paper, hold the LF button down, and turn the printer back on at the same time. Go. Here we go. LF. Was that all of them? I guess so. Yeah. And that is a lot darker than it was. Wonder if that's the darkest it gets. But yeah, it's working. Look at here. Yeah, it's way, you can hardly even read that before they get what the seller tested compared to the after stuff. Yeah, this is actually readable, so that's good. Okay, great. Well, let's clean this guy up a little bit. Um, taking the liberty of wiping this thing down a little better. A bit on here. Let's get the surface dust off. Let's see. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty gross. You got junks just flying out of there. Get the corners here. All right, I'm going to open this guy up here. It says to take the knob off. Pull the knob off. Flip her upside down and take the screws out. on the left side here. No. So it's just this there. I uh, should it's on the knob there. Okay, that wasn't too bad. The manual made it seem like it's is that a date code? Eighty two? Like we got a power supply area, some ROMs, dip switch settings. Uh, I think that might be the graphics board. Not quite sure. Hmm. These chips are dated 1982. That's when it must have been made. Yuck. What's that? Bunch of old thread. Nice. Wow, there's a lot of junk in here. Alright, got her cleaned up for the most part here. Um, looking a lot better. Put some lube on the rails here for the print head to move around. Um, yeah, so cleaned her up. Looks a lot better. Um, wasn't that dirty, but somewhat dirty. Wasn't too dirty for being uh, as old as I am. 1982. So, we'll throw this thing back together here. Alright, there we go. Yeah, that's better. There. There we go. Lock it back in. That's better. Alright, that's in there. There we go. So there's a little hole down here more. And then the paper goes under here. There we go. Okay. Good. I'll button her back up. All right, I've got the Inspiron 8200 here hooked up. Um, Elmo 3 may enjoy that. He's got a similar one, I believe. Um, anyway, uh, it's been a long time since I used the XP, so let's add a printer. Next, local printer. Printer port one. Let's see, is Epson in here? Epson. Uh, MX80. MX80, there we go. Nice. Sounds good. Yeah. You know how much easier this is compared to Windows 10? We have activity. Uh, 
That don't look right. What the heck? Something isn't right. Must not be configured correctly in the dip switches. I think it's setting a return every time. It was used on an Atari. So yeah, it's probably not set up correctly for a PC. That is not right. Look at this horse sugar. That is not right. Well, I think I found the issue here. Um, switch 2-2, two, two, actually 2-4. It gives in, wait, no, 2-3. It forces automatic line feed with each carriage return, I think. When off, line feed must be provided via software. So that was this switch here, which the, he did have on. Um, so I flipped it off. Hopefully that will fix it. So now I've got it apart again. All right, let's see if we got anywhere. Okay. Um, hmm. Print test page. There we go. That's better. That's fixed. Yep, that's what it was. It's actually not too bad quality. Well, maybe it is. It's actually not bad when it's solid text. What? Something's still not correct. I don't know what that's all about. It's like skewing on the right side. get it. It's clear on the left. And the right text gets all blurry. It's not that loud either. Is he just not pulling right at the... not look good. I do not understand. 
How does it get all blurry? Hmm. Well, it is looking a lot better now. Um, printed an image of itself, and it looks okay. Um, actually, that's not so good. But the uh, text is looking a lot better now. So you compare that. Yeah, see, look. And it doesn't look like it's doing this blurriness really anymore. It's looking all right. Maybe the print head was stuck or old grease or something, but it seems like the more I'm using it, the better it's looking. So that's good. I think it's uh, alright.